morning. I think I'm live. Nice early morning today for me. We will see who hops on. Good morning. Just getting ready, getting set up here. Doing a um, true backyard botanical art for our last uh, backyard botanical art live stream. Um, but don't worry, that does not mean that we're not doing botanical art anymore. I'll get into that in just a, in just a minute. But um, just kind of slowly waking up here today with my coffee. Hope you have some coffee too. My name is Laura. If you've not tuned in before, happy you're here. And um, yeah, we're about to, about to get set up and get going. And we're going to have some fun doing some watercolor. I'm going to do camellias today. Um, I did cut some paper whites from my yard too. I might add them in. We'll see. We'll see what we decide. Um, but these gorgeous camellias came from um, the very wonderful, very kind Neil Brantley's backyard. He made the mistake of posting um, some gorgeous pictures of all the camellias that he has. And I messaged him and I was like, Neil, I need a camellia. May I please come get some? And he was very kind and let me do that. Um, so I'm excited to use those. Good morning to everybody I see hopping on. Hey, Kevin. Hey, Madison. If I don't know you, um, and I'm not directly saying hello to you, I'd love to know you. So say hi in the comments and I will, I will learn you. I think my sister's here. Hey, Alicia, I love you. Good morning. Very early California time. Good morning, Whitney. I am um, a little bit tired today. So our sweet, our sweet precious Flora woke up around two this morning um, with a pretty high fever. Luckily it's down now, um, but I haven't really slept. <laughs> so I'm having one of those parent mornings where um, I'm up, I've got to do stuff, the sun is up. Um, but uh, if I don't seem quite like myself, it's because I haven't really slept. But that is what coffee is for. Hey Angie, good morning. So I hope everybody's doing great, having a good morning, and um, we're going to get started in just a second. Let's see here. Super excited about these camellias. If you see Neil, tell him thank you. I want everybody to tell him thank you. All right. Getting to where I can see you on my computer, or I guess see me, see me on my computer. Hmm, there we are. All right. So I'm gonna be working on a really, really small paper today, a really small sheet. And um, it is 140 pound watercolor, so it's pretty thick, good, good and sturdy. Um, and to give you an idea, to give you an idea of what size I'm working with, this is um, eight inches by five and a half inches, so pretty small. Um, but when I get Valentine's, <laughs> I don't even know. Are you are you guys into Valentine's? I I love Valentine's Day. Um, my mom always made it really special for us growing up, and so it's one of those um, one of those holidays that even if it seems a little bit silly, it's a lot of fun for, for me, I guess, for nostalgia purposes. So I love giving Valentines to people, especially handmade Valentines. And so I thought, what a great way to spend our last Backyard Botanical Art live stream than um, this close to Valentine's Day, getting some, getting some made that have a botanical uh, theme. That is not to say, if you are not into holidays, then you are not a Valentine's person. I know lots of people actually feel quite opposite that I do about Valentine's Day. Um, if you are one of those people, you don't have to make it a Valentine. Guess what? You can just make a pretty picture of a camellia today. That's great. 
Um, but so I'm working on a pretty small sheet and I'm actually gonna end up when we're done uh, cutting it out. So it'll, it'll get even smaller. Okay, I'm gonna tape this up. I'm not taping it up so that, um, so that I'm keeping it in a certain, I'm not trying to frame it, like I said, because I'm gonna be cutting out what, what I draw and paint. Um, but I'm taping it for the sake of you being able to see it and me being able to work upright. So, so I'm not doing a border, I'm just doing loops on the back. And that is how I'm working today. Whitney, I saw you said good morning. Good morning to you, dear friend. I hope you're having a lovely Saturday. I am here on my back porch for backyard botanical art today. Um, and I guess I could go ahead and tell you the, the reason that I'm saying, keep calling this the last backyard botanical art is because um, next month on March 6th, um, we are going to have kind of a return of sorts to our botanical art workshop. It's going to be um, a pre-recorded lesson that then we'll do a two-hour workshop um, live stream with. So still not in person, just trying to be safe. Um, and then we'll start doing those workshops again quarterly. So after the one in March, the next will be in the summer and in the fall, etc. But so those are just a little bit different in that they don't happen so often and they're just a little bit more intense. They last a little longer than the quick hour live stream. We're still doing some live streams, don't worry. We're not dropping all live streams by any means. We love this platform. We love reaching y'all in this way. Um, I love connecting with you like this. I have plans to do different live streams, don't worry. Um, just gonna ease off on the botanical monthly, that's all, all right. But so if you wanna um, find out more about the um, botanical art workshop in March, on March 6th, just check out our website, mmfa.org. Um, it is a lesson that I'll be doing, so you'll still get a little Laura time. You'll still get your quirky artist here. All right, I'm gonna zoom in on my paper, get my flowers ready. I'm gonna be starting um, with pencil today using a 2B as as usual um, I would normally not be using a softer lead pencil but I use it so that you following along at home or watching this later as a recording um, can see the drawing better because it makes a darker line um, if I was doing this on my own time I would prefer a hard lead pencil with a much softer line because I don't want to see the line that much but all right let me zoom in Hope everybody's doing good. Here we are. Just trying to get you on there. Hmm. Move this a little bit. That will work great. All right. All right, I'm gonna be working in watercolors today, but if you have colored pencils or if you have just regular pencils, acrylics, whatever you wanna use is, that's your choice, right? You do you. <laughs> see. I'm gonna start with drawing. Kinda of get these where you can see them. can see our inspiration. What I love about these particular camellias um, is how, how ruffly they are. You know, it's almost like just this gorgeous, just overlapping of, of materials. Um, very, um, very kind of Southern and, and uh, like a big fluffy skirt is how I see this. And I just love that. Um, so I'm just going to play with some soft lines and curves. I like to start from the middle and work my way out. It's just a personal, a personal thing. Um, there we are. 
you can see this. All right, let's go. So I'm gonna start here in the middle. You don't have to do camellias if you don't even have camellias or if you don't like camellias. Um, any flower you like. If you really like roses, then, then you draw roses. Um, if you really like daffodils, or if you really like, let's see if y'all gonna be able to see that. Let me zoom in just a little bit. There we go. If you really like tulips or lilies, this project is, I'm using winter blooming flowers because I'm, I, I love them and I want it to be seasonal in that sense for Valentine's but you do not have to do what I'm doing. I always encourage you to have fun and do your own thing. So right now I'm just kind of adding in petals. I'm not entirely sure y'all can see that very well. I'm trying to zoom in. I hope you can see that. Let me know if that's too light. I can see it a little bit, but not as well as I see it on my phone or in person. But this is the one thing too about drawing flowers is that um, they're all a little different even though they have a certain like shape or look to them. Um, you as the artist have the eye to say, well, it looked a little different to me. So mine turns that way or my petals are shaped slightly differently or whatever. Just have fun with these lines. Again, it's just kind of like overlapping layers of, a, of like a really full skirt is how I'm seeing it. And it's so beautiful. Curvy and loose and overlapping. I'd love to know if anybody's drawing along today. painting along today, however you're creating. Okay, my sister says she can see, so that's good. What's really gonna make these come alive is the color when we add it, so. Right now it kind of looks like a really wonky jigsaw puzzle. <laughs> I'm enjoying it. One thing I always say that I'll include today, just in case um, we have anybody who is a first time joiner. It looks like I'm off screen a little bit. I will zoom out just a little bit. There you go. Is you wanna make sure that you're just relaxed and loose so you're not pressing too hard. And then also remember that you're drawing what you see, um, not specifically what your brain knows is there. So just because you know a petal is a certain shape or you know that there are more petals behind the petal you're working on, um, you don't have to draw everything. You just wanna draw exactly what you see. Even if it doesn't seem like it makes sense, even if you're like, well, that's not really, that's not really the shape of that. If it's what you're seeing, then draw it. One more right there. Oops. I'm gonna take a sip of my coffee for a second and let y'all catch up. I've moved my picture a couple times while I was drawing and I wanna make sure you can still see it. All right, 
something I haven't put in here yet that I want to is I want to make sure that I get even though you can't see them quite as well in this camellia there's just a little bit um, of the, the uh, pistol and stamen in there so I want to make sure that we see that part so I'm going to look for where it is in my flower and fit it into my drawing and these are just going to be simple lines and kind of ovals. So let's see. So working from that angle. Just going to kind of pull one here. too many because I can't see too many in real life that's all I think I want to add all right so I'm about done with my flower um, I think I'm gonna put a couple of the leaves in to give it a little personality because they've got a good curve to them too Whoop. if you see that the way they're curving forward I love that that's a fun thing to draw so I'm gonna add those in so I've got one coming out this way. You're gonna be able to see that. Okay, good. It's just gonna go up and curve down, kind of sharp, and then just focusing on the lines. It's a little wider, and then I see a little bit of it over here, but not much. It's coming out that way. So this is actually the underneath of that leaf from the way that I'm seeing it. And then down here, I'm going to be seeing, let me get to where you can see, I'm seeing the front of a leaf, the top of a leaf. So I'm just going to use some quick, simple lines. These are not my focus. The focus is the flower. Get those in there. Point down. Just to have a little green in there. And that'll be fun. Let me go out just a little bit. Hey, Nathan, good morning, how are you? Happy to see you, my friend. Sort of, in, in virtual land. Hi, Meredith, how are you doing? How's that sweet little baby? All right. So I'm gonna go to getting some color on here. We're moving kind of quickly, which is um, unusual for me <laughs> but um, I also want to cut this out at the end so you see final product when we're done so that works I'm gonna um, put some water on my watercolors I'm gonna prep my watercolor palette so I'm gonna zoom out for a second and just kind of say hello again with my face hi how's it going so what I'm gonna do is take um didn't bring a very big brush out here today but I'm gonna take one of the bigger brushes which is really actually small um, but in comparison to my others it's a little bigger and I'm just gonna get a bunch of water on it and put it in the colors that I want to use um, for my watercolor today and you could be doing a you know different different colors, different flowers, like we said. Um, but I'm doing a lot of um, red preps here, pinks and reds, and a little bit of yellow, and then some green and blue. So when you get down to it, I'm doing all the colors. <laughs> if you've got yellow, red, and blue, you've got all the colors, Laura. All right. I hope y'all are having a good time and enjoying yourselves. I'm so happy you're here. <laughs>
Let's see, what did Nathan say? Oh, thanks, Nathan. I'm so glad. I'm so glad to know that you watch. That makes me happy. Oops. All right. All right, so there we are back into our a little close-up so we can see. And I'm gonna be working with a pretty small brush today. Um, that's just how I like to work. And like I said, you know, you don't have to do the exact same colors that I do, but I'll be working with some pinks and reds and um, I'm gonna do probably a lot of um, wet on wet application within each petal, just because I wanna also achieve this kind of variegated um, color coloration on the petals. So where they are pink and white. Um, so I'm gonna wet my brush. Hey, Margaret Lynn. Oh my gosh, I'm so happy you're here. It's fun to see you on Instagram during a botanical. All right, so I'm just gonna get a little water and put it in. I'm not soaking it, and I am working vertically, so I don't wanna to put too much, obviously, also, because I don't want it to drip down while we're working. And I'm working at one petal at a time, making sure I get the color that I want. Since I know this is going to be a Valentine, um, I'm not going to try to be perfectly accurate with my color, but I do want it to be close, obviously, to what to what I want. So I'm just kind of touching that into what I've just done, letting it spread. And I want to keep it really soft. I want to get um, the, just the feel for how sweet these flowers are. So it's a pretty simple process. There's not, um, not too much. No, <laughs> you can't mess that up. Just put a little water on there, add some color, have some fun. Um, to give you an idea in case you're wondering what it would look like if I did the the wet paint on the on the dry paper. So I'm gonna do this one next and add a little bit of that in there. And for this one, that's helpful because this part of the petal is kind of curving under, back, back into the center of the flower. So it is a little darker. So what I can do now is actually rinse off my brush a little bit and then come back with a wet or damp clean brush and just kind of pull out a little bit of that paint. So that it'll look like part of the petal is more in the light and part of the petal is going down into where it's a little darker, creating a shadow with, just with some pigment and some water. I'm gonna add a little bit more. That's nice. All right, and then down in here, it's really where like, a lot of this, the center of my flower is, so I want it to be pretty dark. So what I'm probably gonna do, y'all still seeing that okay? I'll get a little closer. I'm gonna um, do a little bit of green into my red. So I'm gonna mix, mix here, whoop, on my palette. <laughs> and make kind of a um, deep burgundy with red with just a little bit of green added to it. If I put too much green, it's going to go to a, a deeper brown or, you know, kind of a deeper gray, depending on which particular red and green you're using. Um, 
but that's okay because if that happens, you just try mixing a little differently. Right, I like what I've got here. So I'm gonna use it. And I'm just gonna paint right in here. It's a little purple. fix that. But for a first layer, I'm okay with that. All right. I think I want it actually a little bit darker too. So a little more green. How's everybody doing? I never, I, I never heard back on if anybody is also creating or y'all are just relaxing and having some fun today. Mine's still looking a little bit too purple for me. I'm trying to get the right color. At some point I'll just have to say, okay, Laura, just do it. I guess I'll do that. All right, painting that in, we want it to be dark. I'm trying to kind of leave where some of my pollen is. And then from there, I'm gonna wait and let those dry before I add any of the yellow, because I don't want it to all blend. I'm gonna start working on these um, outside petals. Same kind of loose and fun out here. Just gonna put water on them. Oops. That's what happens when you're working vertical. <laughs> Accidentally painted that one by touching into where I had other paint. That's okay. I was gonna paint it light anyway. <laughs> All right. Do you want it to be a little bit more red? So I'm gonna make it, adding a red to it. starting to rain here. Is it raining anywhere else? It's starting to pick up out in my backyard. But it sounds wonderful. Oh, thanks, Margaret Lynn. That's very nice of you to say. I'm happy you're here. So I'm getting a really light wash on that petal um, and mostly water there. A wash has mostly water in it with a little bit of color. And I'm gonna paint in a deeper red or a bolder red. But I don't wanna get all of it. These outer petals are really where you see a lot of that, um, the white spots. So, I'm gonna use that wet on wet technique to kind of accomplish making sure we see those. So all I have to do is just kind of not paint the whole petal. I'm sure we all know, but just in case, the camellia is um, Alabama's state flower 
and they are so beautiful so fun to have this gorgeous pop of color that blooms during the winter and then it's so great that they're uh, they're evergreen their their leaves are always happy and green on the on the shrub or the tree however yours grow there's such variety in them too all right so how I just did that one is pretty much how I'm going to do the rest where I'm getting just a little bit of a wash of color on there and then painting around I see a line that I should have erased, but I want to erase really fast. There we go. And then painting in some good bolder red, wet on wet. If you do have flowers in front of you that you're working from, of course, make sure that you're looking at your flowers, following what you see. That is the best way to success when you are doing something that's botanical. deeper red behind this petal because I want the idea of this one being behind the smaller one to really stand out but then I don't want that to be quite so strong so I cleaned my brush and I'm kind of just drying it off a little bit and I want to just pull them together And then this one back here on my flower is all red, so I'm just gonna get some red and paint it as is. Here we go. So this one I'm doing uh, wet on dry, so you can see how much more control I have. It's not bleeding into the paper so quickly. It's almost kind of like using a marker. I just got outside the lines, but guess what? That doesn't matter because I'm going to cut it out anyway because we are relaxed and we're having fun. I want that to be a little bit deeper in here, so I'm just adding a little bit more red, just kind of touching it in along where that edge is. All right, and then I've got a few more petals to do. I'm just gonna keep going kind of at this pace. This one's got a good variegation on it, on mine, so I'm gonna do a wash. Make sure y'all can see that. Just getting a light wash of water, kind of stained on here. It's got a little bit of pink on my, or 
pinkish red on my brush still. Pink is red, right? right? Just a light red. Um, and then I'm gonna take my deeper, bolder red and paint it in. This one almost looks a little tie-dyed. I really love the look of it. That works really well with the uh, with the wet on wet. last few um, probably wet on dry just so I make sure I have enough time to get the leaves done too and get this cut out so what I'm gonna make sure I'm accomplishing with these is that they're gonna have some darker spots because they are closer to the center and they're overlapping a lot so I want them to be a deeper red so I'm getting a good darker red just paint on them first and then I'm going to come back with that combination again of kind of a greenish and red burgundy to accomplish my shadows or where there might be a little bit of a darker value on the petal Same thing over here from where I am looking this petal I'm working on is behind these two in the center so it's getting shadows cast from those so I'm just kind of painting it in pretty pretty boldly red right there and then I'm gonna Take a slightly cleaned brush, still damp, and just kind of pull that color out. with making sure we've got at least the first layer of color on all of our little petals and I'm going to step back for a second and just kind of look for anywhere that I need to adjust anywhere where the color is either pulling too much okay where it's gathered so like right here I'm just going to soak that up a little bit And also looking for where I might want it to be a little bit darker to add a little bit more depth this one has a really watercolor um, look to it this morning I'm normally a little bit more um, cleaner in my edges I don't normally go so so flowy and so blended but but I like it. it's very soft this morning which I think works with the camellias We get the green on the leaves while wow. I'm waiting for that red to dry a little bit. And I'm gonna do those um, wet on dry. So just get in the green, paint it right on. I'm doing this I'll just say again 
thank you so much for being here today. <laughs> I've enjoyed doing these with y'all. I was thinking this morning about when we started doing these backyard botanical art live streams with the onset of quarantine time back in the spring and they've been so much fun. I've really enjoyed getting to work with, um, work with y'all, work with our audience in this way. It's really been an experience for me. And like I said, we are not ending all live streams by any means, just transitioning the botanical art class back to its quarterly workshop format. So next month on March 6th, we will have, um, you can register to, um, to take a virtual botanical art workshop and that will include a pre-recorded lesson that I'll do um, and then it'll have a live stream component on March 6th where we will actually get to you know kind of talk and zoom together create together in the moment so I'm using a, a deeper green and with a combination of a little bit of blue to get a little bit of that shadow on that leaf Oop, I don't know if you can see that I got oh, there it is hope you can see that now I was working where you couldn't see I apologize I got caught up in what I was doing Here, I'm just gonna put a little bit of a different green yeah. with it being the underneath. All right. We need to get this yellow in here, let me get a much smaller brush. I see Danielle has joined us. Good morning, I hope you're doing well today. Making gorgeous art as always, you always do. Danielle, I envision that you're just constantly painting and drawing all the time and I love that. Lady's about done. I'm going to double check my reds, maybe add a little bit more depth. Just to keep us all on the same page for what's going on at the museum, we are open at the museum. Um, we just have installed, um, are installing two really amazing exhibitions. Um, Bethany Collins and Bethany Collins is an artist from Montgomery um, originally and it's going to be a truly gorgeous exhibition. You do not want to miss it. And then we also have a um, photography exhibition of the late Anderson Scott, um, also originally from Montgomery. So two really great kind of make you sit down and think and enjoy um, at the same time, the way that art can do, appreciate the beauty, but get a deeper meaning from it. Our 
hours are, um, let's see, Tuesday through Saturday. We are currently open from 10 to 5. And on Sundays, we're open from noon to 5. And the only major, major difference is that you enter through the sculpture garden gates right now. And obviously you wear a mask when you are in the building. All right, I'm trying to get a little bit more depth in here before I move on, since it got a little purple. And I want it to be more of a deep red. Let me fix that. Just kind of going through and doing touch-ups where I feel like I need them. I really want this to be darker right here. So I'm going to add a little bit of a deeper red, kind of a brownish red there. ready to cut this one out. So what I'm going to do is zoom out a little bit. Say hello. Hi. We are outside. It is a little chilly, so my nose might be a little red now, but I'm bundled up in layers. I figured we couldn't have our last backyard botanical art live stream and be inside. So it's a little chilly, but it's pleasant with layers. So what I'm going to do now is cut out my camellia. Valentine's in a way that you might not have thought of before. So basically just, this is the fun part too, where anywhere that I got out of the lines that I don't like, I can fix it. cutting in case you don't know don't keep trying to cut the whole shape without disconnecting the piece that you've just done so take that off that excess causes trouble I don't want it now I can keep going cleanly I am a drawer and painter by just personal preference of creating, but I will tell you that I love cutting things out. Maybe I should do more collage. There's a different kind of life that comes on to what you've created when you take it from its paint, uh, just on, on paper with, with a background or surrounding paper too cutting it out. I don't know. Something happens. It's a lot of fun. Ideally, you would probably let this dry a little longer, <laughs> but I'm taking mine together now. Get all my little edges. If you want more information about those exhibitions that I mentioned, of course, as always, 
go to our website, mmfa.org. We've got exhibition descriptions, a little more about the artist there also. <laughs> Tara, <laughs> you got here just at the right time. <laughs> I, I walk very responsibly and slowly with my scissors, <laughs> but I do love cutting things. So, like I said earlier, we are going from working on an already small paper to cutting out what we created. So I knew it was going to get small. But I just think for Valentine's, or again, if you're not into holidays or Valentine's, it doesn't have to be a Valentine. It can just be a little note to a friend or whomever. And they're really easy to pop in an envelope or kind of like a postcard, right? Well, postcards mail by themselves. This you would want to put in an envelope. Leave little notes on somebody's desk or tape them to their door. What are other ways you can leave love notes or friend notes? I really like the look that we achieved on this with that softer wet into wet and the way that it kind of mimics the variegated look of the petals. It's really nice. Almost there, I've got a couple more spots that I wanna kinda of cut out, but I'm really enjoying cutting all that paper away. I love that. Tara's got ideas, she's the best. On the windshield, in Ziploc plastic bag. That's a great idea. I love that. Have to hunt down everybody's cars. <laughs> My paper's tearing in a couple places as I cut. It would be more ideal to wait, um, and typically I do, but we only have so long while we're here, huh? Um, you would want it to dry a little more before you try to cut it. Trying to cut wet things just kind of starts to make the paper tear as opposed to giving a clean cut. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to leave this that, whoops, right here. You can kind of see where it's done that. I'm going to leave it for now. Maybe when it's dry, I'll clean it up a little bit. So at this stage, you could even, if you want to, if there's more painting that you want to do, more details, I think we all know that as artists or appreciators of art even, um, you can find things that you want to do differently, you know, days, months, years later. Um, I could go back and make some of these spots a little darker to add a little more depth. But at the same time, I'm happy with my, my sweet little Valentine Camellia. And I've got my blank page on the back that I can write a little note. I'm happy with it. I hope y'all have had fun today. Let me put it right there. Um, like I said, this is the last Backyard Botanical Art live stream. But that does not mean that our live streams are going away and it does not mean that botanical art is going away. It just means that I'm gonna go back to doing quarterly botanical workshops with one coming up on March 6th that will be virtual through Zoom. So check out our website, mmfa.org. And um, always stay tuned through Instagram and Facebook, website, Twitter, if you use it. Um, we're on all of those platforms, Montgomery MFA. If you wanna get direct information from me about 
the workshop next month. Um, it is free, by the way. It's not a, it's not a paid workshop. And um, it's going to be a lot of fun. So please sign up. Um, you can just message us even right here on Instagram. Message the museum account. And I will let you know. I'll send you a link. Okay? I hope everybody has a wonderful weekend. And have you had fun? I've got a couple minutes that you can tell me if you had fun today. I hope you have. Thank you, Margaret Lynn. I guess it's Valentine's Day next weekend already. I think it is. That's why we're doing this. So happy Valentine's Day to all. If you do make some botanical inspired Valentine's, we'd love to see them. So send them, send them to our messages. Love you too, Tara. Everybody have a wonderful weekend. And I'll see you around for sure. <laughs>